privilege today to have um, our panel members. I'm James Toomey, who some of you may have met as CEO of Mission Australia, Peter Smith, CIO of Mission Australia, and Ruchi Motal Suri, as mentioned, founder, Success Culture and Oscar Jin, um, business partner. So we're looking forward to them sharing with us, as I say, their experience and journey. First question for James. Brief. Can you tell us more about your whole experience of this process? I think the, the first thing that struck me was um, Rushi was interested in what the organisation did in, uh, in terms of what our purpose was and what we were actually trying to achieve as an organisation rather than just looking at it from the point of view of it's a technology project within an organisation. That was very important because um, the, the disconnect between our, uh, our technological aspirations, if you like, and the purpose of the organisation have been quite profound. The key part of that was, as James said, we actually got across all the stakeholders to understand you know, what things weren't, weren't working for them. In particular, in this one of the particular projects, we had a business owner of the product who wasn't really engaged or involved in the actual build, initial build. And once we got them engaged and involved, um, involved in the build, it just it flew off. Um, it, it, the turnaround was quite quite remarkable in some ways, although there was a lot of work to get it there, but the terrarium was remarkable because we actually engaged the business properly and brought them along on the journey. What I did was I set up that entire delivery of the framework as a project and the best thing that, the best statement that I heard was in the final steering committee when I was closing, I asked everybody what was their feedback, what did they get out of the whole process of the framework and James's comment I still remember was I finally see the value of IT. You can't have a business strategy without technology. It is a very important thing to, to align to that your project portfolio if it does not align to the business strategy then you have to question what are you delivering and for what reason are you running the projects. Secondly Peter can you tell us a little bit more about the steps that you took? Well, to be honest, to get it aligned, um, there's a, because of some of the history, there was an initial reluctance to, to, um, to involve IT in some of the business discussions because the, the business didn't see a huge amount of value from it. In fact, I think at times IT were a definite disabler. Um, you know, and now we're invited to the table to talk about some of the things they've got, they're doing. Uh, they're actually giving us feedback on where things don't work because, it, you know, um, but gradually you can see it's starting to line up more and more with the key things that the business are trying to achieve and the discussions that we're having now are much more focused around transforming and, and understanding the part that technology plays. James, on that, are you able to describe your experience from a business <coughs> perspective of that process as it was being implemented um, in any sort of wins, successes or lessons learnt on the way? There was absolutely a, a cultural misunderstanding between those two bits of the mm. those two bits of the organisation and a, um, a tendency to communicate uh, requirement not in a way necessarily that could be understood by the IT team, you know, this is what I, I, I need this. Um, but, but no, but we're, we're offering this and actually not much dialogue between, uh, you know, how do we bridge that gap. And, I, and it has actually developed our capability. We're now we're in the uh, beginning phase of a, of a, of a major um, technological or technology shift in terms of a, use of, a, of a CRM platform that we're developing. We're working with Microsoft to develop and move on to for the organisation. And we wouldn't have been able to embrace that possibility. So, it's, so in terms of the, you know, the wind and the developments, I mean, it, it's really quite a profound shift over that period of time. Yeah. Okay. So almost a real cultural shift within the organisation to be yeah. ready to yeah. to look at other stages. Yeah. And Ruchi, any thoughts on that? For me, it was more a facilitation of the conversation, and I think that's how a lot of the decision making happened. I don't know how it's progressed since, Peter. I'd say there's still there's still sometimes there's still a concern around. Over to governance, do I have to come to another to another meeting? Yeah. But by and large, the people who are coming now are actually way more informed than they ever were before about what what's happening and the timing. Uh, we've got a great, much greater awareness of change and change management and the challenges in that space. Um, how important is the human element in this whole process? 
that we've been hearing about, right? The human element. So I think what I've discovered through that process of rescuing projects is that Yes, you can tighten the processes, you can introduce good processes, but there's absolutely no substitute for people-to-people -people connection because it's ultimately people who form our teams. And um, just listening to James and Peter, um, the forums that we set up as part of the project delivery framework was to facilitate conversations, human-to-human -human conversations. It wasn't about your Gantt charts and it wasn't about your risk and issues log and it wasn't about status reports. It was about, we are here to provide a service, what is it that you need? If you can't articulate, we will facilitate that articulation. So we need those soft skills and we need to be able to change our approach depending on who we are dealing with, which is emotional intelligence. So, very important. Okay, well, thank you very much.